Hey, Comets. It's Mrs. Smooth. Hope you are all great. Um, today I'm reading How I Became a Pirate. Got my pirate, on, pirate hat on, ready to go. Pirates have green teeth when they have any teeth at all. I know about pirates because one day when I was at the beach building a sandcastle and minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was because this flag had a skull and crossbones on it and because I could hear the pirate singing, Hey ho, blow the man down. They were a little off key. I tried to tell Dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. I tried to tell Mom, but she was busy slathering baby sister with sunblock. So I went back to my sandcastle, but I kept an eye on those pirates. By then, they were rowing to shore. When they landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy there, matey! Be this the Spanish main? Uh, no, I said. Um, this is North Beach. Shiver me timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. He walked around my sandcastle. He looked at the moat and then yelled back to his crew, He's a digger, he is, and a good one to boot. A good one to boot, the others agreed. What be your name, matey? The head pirate asked. Uh, Jeremy Jacob, sir? I told him. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, you're looking at Braid Beard and his crew. We've been needing a digger like yourself. We've a chest of treasure to bury. Aye, treasure, the others shouted. You're coming with us, Braid Beard told me. I didn't think Mom and Dad would mind as long as I got back in time for soccer practice the next day. By the way, they would mind. Never go with a stranger. But this is just a make up, made up story. That's how I became a pirate. As soon as we were on board, Braidbeard showed me the chest of gold and jewels. Gotta find a safe place for this hair treasure. It's high time we're off, he announced. We're off, everyone shouted. And then we set sail. There was plenty to do on board. The pirates taught me to sing sea chanties, the louder the better, and to say real pirate stuff like landlubber and scurvy dog. By dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, Down the hatch, me ladies! Down the hatch! We all shouted, and Braidbeard gulped his food and said, Hand over the meat! The meat! We all roared. Nobody told us to finish our spinach. There wasn't any. Or to chew up our carrots. They weren't allowed on board. And we talked with our mouths full, and nobody said please or thank you. I think pirate manners means no manners, right? After dinner, I tried to catch the pirates to play soccer. Braidbeard kicked the ball and yelled, Arg, soccer! 
And then the crew yelled, Arr! Soccer! And then everybody dove for the ball at once, and it rolled off the right off the deck. After it, me hearties, Braidbeard commanded. After it? We all whispered. We fought over who would go get the ball, but it didn't matter anyway because a shark came along and swallowed it in one gulp. So much for soccer. I wouldn't go after it either. By now it was past bedtime, but nobody tells pirates to go to bed, to take a bath, to brush your teeth. Maybe that's why their teeth are green. Pirates sleep with one eye open, just in case. And they don't change into pajamas, unless they want to. Pirates don't do anything they don't want to, except for maybe swabbing the decks. I wanted to be a pirate forever. But then I found out what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and to read me a story. Tuck you in, he bellowed. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew cried. And the only thing they had to read was a map. Don't you have any books? I asked. Braidbeard looked confused. Books? I didn't even bother to ask about a good night kiss. <laughs> it wasn't easy to fall asleep without a story, but I was finally dozing off when a storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed up against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. Couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeard shouted. Batten down the hatches. And everybody ran around yelling and lowering and battening, and nobody had time to sit close and tell me it would be over soon. Nobody even noticed me. I decided I didn't want to be a pirate after all. Just then, flash, crack, crash, lightning hit the mast and split it right down the middle. What do we do now, yelled one of the pirates. We'll have to turn back, called another. But the treasure, hollered Braidbeard. Where will we bury the treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know a, the perfect digging spot. When the storm was over, we rode back to shore and buried the chest. We drew a map so we could find the treasure again, but I don't think I'll need it. So here they're carrying it. And here's his map. So here's his house, and it says, I know it's backwards to you, but it says Jeremy Jacobs Backyard. And look at X marks the spot, right? It's by the tree in his backyard. After that, the pirates re repaired the ship and got ready to set sail. And before they left, Braidbeard handed me a flag and said, you make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Jeremy Jacobs. Guard that treasure well, and we'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, the crew re repeated. And if you ever need us, Braidbeard added, just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the other shouted. And maybe I will, but not today. I have soccer practice. I believe.
believe that's it. Oh, look at his team. Oh, again, it's back backwards to you guys, but he's playing on the Pirates team for soccer. All right. Stay well. We all miss you. Bye.